wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When people say things are just not happening the way I want them to happen. They say I can't find a job or I've lost a job or they say I can't find a husband or I can't find a wife or for example I'm, I don't have enough money, I don't have a place, I really am struggling, my health is just not you know, getting better, I can't find what's wrong with me, I don't know things are just not right, I don't have friends, I've got problems with the people around me. I really am facing so much of difficulty and difficulty upon difficulty and the Almighty just seems like he doesn't even care for me and I don't know I've been calling out to him and I don't know why he's not responding and I'm just struggling and I think I've just had enough. People say we don't have children, we've been trying for children for a long long time, we really really cannot continue this way, it's a very very difficult thing and I think I've been calling out to the Almighty for a long long time and He just doesn't listen. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, very very important uh, points that are raised by some of you and I think we need to address this. Remember something, the Creator who created myself yourselves an entire creation is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the maker we call him the nourisher the cherisher the sustainer the provider the protector the curer the one in absolute control of every aspect of existence the one who knows what is best for you and I the owner of the unseen the owner of all knowledge that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah knows what is best for you and not only what is best for you, he knows whether what you want is actually good for you. And if it is, then when it is good for you. Sometimes you want something, but it's not good for you now. Sometimes you want something, it's not good for you at all, but you don't know. I know of people, for example, who don't have children. And I pray that Allah bless them with children. But we need to get used to a certain... Sorry, let me speak slowly, inshallah. Okay. We need to get used to calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that we leave it up to him. If he knows this is better for us, let it happen. So when you say, Oh Allah, I desperately want to marry this person. If it is good for me, if it is good for my future, if it is good for my deen, my dunya, my life and so on, uh, my hereafter, then let it happen. And if it is not good for me, then keep it away from me. Is that not a fair dua? A lot of you would say, nah, it's not. I want a million pounds or a million dollars and I need it. You know, if Allah knows it's not good for you, he won't give it to you. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, there is something in Islam called istikhara, meaning to seek the guidance of the Almighty. So you've got to read a little supplication that was taught by the Prophet, peace be upon him. He says that the companions were taught this the companions say we learnt it we memorized it and we used to read it as though we were reading a verse of the Quran so in that prayer it says oh Allah I ask you from your knowledge because you know and I don't know you know what is better for me I don't know and you know you are the one who will choose I'm not the one who will choose you are the Almighty I'm not the Almighty you know, I don't know, you are the knower of the unseen. Oh Allah, if what I want is better for me, my current life, my future, my life after death, then make it good for me, make it easy for me, make me able to achieve it and give it to me and bless me once you've given it to me. Bless me in it, meaning grant me blessings through that particular thing. And if it is not good for me, for my present time, for my future, for my hereafter, uh, for my livelihood, then keep it away from me and keep me away from it and make me happy with your decree. Make me happy with what you've chosen, knowing that it's best for me. That last portion is absolutely important. When things don't work out, your duty is to keep trying. You don't lose hope. You keep trying. And you keep doing what you believe is good for you because the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Keep working hard towards achieving what you firmly believe is best for you. And don't lose hope. Don't lose hope ever. Keep going. And if the Almighty has written that you're going to have it, you will have it. If not, he will open other doors in the process. You know, I've come across people who've lost their jobs. 
Then they went on their own. They, they suffered a loss. Then they tried another venture. They suffered another loss. When they tried the third or the fourth or the fifth venture, they made so much money that it was the best thing they ever did. They actually earned enough. They became multimillionaires. So wasn't that the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wasn't that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opening the doors and saying to you that, you know what? I am actually going to give you the fifth door that you're going to be knocking on that is going to be greater than all the other doors that you've had so far. Wasn't it worth trying two, three, four, five times, the fifth time? Look at the wealthy on the globe. A lot of them have failed in their lives at some stage, but they didn't lose hope. They kept on going and they kept on trying. And one day the doors opened. So we've said this in the past, but we need a reminder of it. I give you another example. When you don't have children, and we all love to have children, and may Allah bless you with children, we get angry. But I promise you, my brothers, my sisters, I've known of people who've ch whose children have harassed them and troubled them and made their lives so difficult and abandoned, not only abandoned, but even tortured them to the degree that they prayed they prayed against their own children and we shouldn't be doing this. You pray a good prayer, not against them. You pray a good prayer and that's the sign of a parent. No matter what your child has done, you pray for them, not against them. There's a difference between the two. One is you're saying something good for them and the other is you're actually asking the Almighty to destroy them. You don't do that. Uh, no matter who it is and what it is, you actually ask the Almighty to protect. Uh, or to protect you from their evil and to guide them to soften their hearts to solve, solve the matter and so on so sometimes the almighty doesn't give you children because maybe he knows that they might be disabled they might be challenged they might be in a way that you might not cope other people can cope other people can manage they are managing and they will be rewarded by the almighty so when the almighty knows it's good for them he may give them but he may not give you because he knows you won't cope. Maybe if the death of that child was written at five years, the Almighty knows that you won't manage, you won't cope. You know, there are other people who've lost their children and they've coped. Some have struggled. And like I always say, no matter who tries to explain to a person who's lost a child, nobody will truly understand the exact difficulty and hardship and, you know, the emptiness that they feel. Because You've got to go through it to feel it. May Allah grant ease to all those who have suffered in this way. So sometimes the Almighty doesn't give you the child. Sometimes He gives you the child. Sometimes He makes you go through hardship and difficulty one after the other. A day will come when that will come to pass. How many of us, we've even forgotten the days we were struggling. So keep going. That's the message I have. Keep going. Keep having hope. Even if you're terminally ill, you keep having hope and you die with that hope if need be. But when you die with hope, you've died very close to the Almighty. You've died having pleased the Almighty with a powerful relationship with Him because you had hope. He taught you to have hope and you died with that hope. And who knows? The Almighty may grant you cure that hope, that might, that belief, that conviction that you're definitely going to be cured. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So this is why I say don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Keep going. He has not abandoned you. He has never abandoned you. But we tend to lose hope because we want things in our time. It's good to happen at, in the time of the Almighty. It will always happen in his time. Don't make haste. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَسْتَعْجِلْ you know, your prayers are answered for as long as you don't make haste. So he was asked, what is the meaning of making haste? He says, when you say, I have prayed and I have called out, but the Almighty is not listening to me. He says, I've listened to you. I heard you. I know when it's right to give you what you're asking. You desperately want to marry someone, but you don't know they will be maybe a means of your downfall. They might be a means of destruction. They might be a means of your sadness, your loss, and so much more. It might end up in an ugly condition. So the Almighty says, we're not going to let it happen from the beginning because we love you. Why don't you trust the Almighty? 
why don't you realize you know what i've got to let this thing go and carry on you can set a deadline you can keep trying like i said you keep trying but there comes a time when you have to move on in things like those i mean this example is you might think there's a contradiction in what i'm saying on one hand i'm saying don't lose hope and keep going and on the other hand i'm saying at certain times you've got to let go but the difference is when it comes to something that your life has come to a standstill regarding you've got to keep going as in you've got to keep trying maybe another job and a third job my beloved brothers and sisters don't lose hope in the mercy of allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will listen to your dua allah will answer your dua allah loves when you ask him when you supplicate to him be sincere in your supplication and have patience and ask him repeatedly whatever you want don't just ask once and lose hope if he doesn't give allah loves when you ask him continuously with sincerity allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran wasta'inu bi sabri was salah ask me with patience and prayer so when you ask allah with patience and with prayer allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely answer allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran uduuni astajib lakum call me i'll respond to your call so allah is there to respond to your wishes your calls your needs but you have to be sincere you have to ask him continuously you have to ask him with sincerity don't just ask him without any sincerity ask him even with few drops of your tears cry out to him wake up during the time of tahajjud and ask him the scholars say the dua made during the time of tahajjud is like an arrow hitting its target it will definitely it will it will definitely be answered by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so don't lose hope in the mercy of allah he is always there to rescue you to solve your problem to give you whatever you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Malik al-Mulk. He's the king of the kings. He says be. He says kun fayakun. It happens. So it's nothing for him. Have big vision and work hard on your vision and mission. when you give your effort when you call allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you pray your daily salah when you do good deeds when you give sadaqa when you pray tahajjud and when you continuously seek forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah will definitely give you he will never reject you allah loves you inna allah yuhibbu at-tawwabina wa yuhibbu al-mutatahhirin Allah loves those who repents and those who purify themselves stay away from sins do more good deeds follow the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and give charity be generous and make dua to allah he will definitely answer all your duas help us build a islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description